hello hello and welcome to another video okay so as i promised this video is going to be all about like reception the first steps when you get to basic training when you're leaving meps i just looked down here in my notes and i had some notes for meps like exactly what happened kind of when we left so i'm going to touch on some of those things and then we're going to roll right into what reception was like and things like that it is 10 34 p.m okay and just give you a little backdrop i am home for holiday block leave from basic training so excuse my appearance this is the, as good as it's going to get i do have a little project down here a little diamond dots project that i'm probably going to work on while i talk to you guys i've been coughing since i got the plane so i'm kind of under the weather so excuse me okay but i want to give you guys this information because a lot of you guys are reaching out to me saying hey i'm signing up i want to know a little bit more um i'm on my way to basic training so i just want to let you guys know what i know okay so without further ado let's get into today's video okay. so you guys know at this point the process when you go to meps how all of those things are um when i went to meps the last time which was the time you swear in, the time you get on payroll, the time when you about to like be shipped out to basic training. Let's talk about what they did. So in my notes, I put, they looked at our feet, they looked at our hands, they looked at our back. Um, you guys know that I did cupping before I left and I was like worried about the cupping marks being on my back. All that went away, but they did check all that. One girl actually got like a tattoo before she left and end up not leaving. So they check all that. So just make sure you're not doing anything that you haven't already documented. It's really not wise to go and get like tattoos or new piercings or anything like that. Thinking that you're not going to get caught because you're going to get caught because they're checking for it. Okay. Um, yeah we we're in like our bra and panties so when i went to meps initially we didn't we weren't all in the room in like our bra and panties but when i went the second time like the last time before we shipped out we were all in our bra and panties and they checked us um the next thing they did during that whole process was they gave us our itinerary so at this point you will know you know some people were going to fort jackson some people were going to fort seal which is where i went um some people were going to lackland there were different people going different places but at this point you got your itinerary you knew where you were going um they also gave us meal um, tickets at this time so when you went off to like the airport and things like that you were able to eat it you really had to spend the meal. You really had to spend the meal ticket all at one place. I believe it was like twenty two something dollars. It was like twenty something dollars, but you couldn't break it up. You had to spend it all at one place. So um, they gave us our meal tickets. We had to sign our contracts again. It was basically just kind of like the actual, like I said, getting you on payroll. So what I didn't understand and what no one really said was the first time we swore in, it was kind of like. I don't want to say it was playing, but it, it wasn't as official as when you actually swore in this time, okay? When you got on payroll, okay? So, if you have any second thoughts or anything like that, before you swear in that next time will be the best time for you to change your mind. I'm just going to say that. Nobody said that, but that is what it is, okay? And then the next thing we did is we got to the airport. So when we got to the airport, some people were bused. Like, let's say you went to, let's say you went to Air Force, right? Those people got on buses because they were going to San Antonio. I live in Houston, so they didn't need to fly. They bused them to where they need to be. Um, and the others of us went to the airport. Now, like I said, some people went to different airports. Some people, well, no. We all left from the same airport. Some people were going to different places. Um, I believe we waited around the airport for a good seven hours. So it just really depends. Don't think that you're going to like get straight on a flight and go straight there because it's probably not going to happen. You're probably going to have to wait around. Okay. So I just want to keep that. Like I want you to keep that in mind that the journey really began there at MEPS, but it was hours before we actually got to reception. Okay. Um, and the next thing is, once we got to our destination, there still were no drill sergeants, so we still were kind of, if you didn't eat and things like that at this point, it would be wise for you to eat before you went, before you got on that last bus. Because the last bus was really you going to reception and you were like, you know, you're going off to, you know, you're going off to meet with the drill sergeants and things like that. Um, but up until that point, you were kind of on your own. Um, we stopped by the YMCA, which was like sponsored. It was kind of like the USO and it was it was like a sponsored little thing. And they catered to the military personnel. Like it was a, it was a welcome center. So they catered to us. They had so much food in there. Like 
snacks galore. The people were really nice in there. They were very welcoming. I mean, it was a welcome center, so that's what you would expect, right? And then, once we left the welcome center, we got on the bus to go to reception. Now, I came in, I can't really remember the time, but I, let's say it was like 10.30, 11 o'clock. We barely missed the bus. If we had missed the bus, we would have to wait there until the next buses started running in the morning. So I had just, I mean, we just missed the bus. And when I say just missed the bus, they took us and then they turned around and, and the, the man was like, there's another group of people coming. He's like, they'll have to catch the next bus. So we had just missed the bus. Um, and that's going to mean a lot as I get into what happens once you get to reception, okay? So this is just the part, like I said, going from MEPS to the reception battalion. Let's move on. All right. So once we got to reception, we were standing outside. Um, it's a little windy. You know, I have grown to hate Oklahoma's weather. Like I said, it went to Fort Sill. Um, I thought it was a little chilly that day, but that chilliness on that day would not even, um, it would pale in comparison to how cold it would really get at Fort Sill. Okay, so anyways, we stood outside. They made us, it was one drill sergeant out there. He made us pull out our phone and you called home and basically was like, hey, you know, I'm here. Now for me, it wasn't really all that dramatic because I've been talking to my husband the whole time. So, you know, cause you were allowed to talk on the phone, the bus and things talking like the whole time. He knew where I was in the process. So it wasn't anything, you know, serious. You got about five minutes. Okay. And then they made you turn off your phone and put your phone in the bag. From that point, we all lined up and went inside and sat in chairs and basically got a number that would kind of be your number. Your name would not be your number. This number would be your number for the rest of the time you were at reception. Um, so it would behoove you to write it down. They give you a little book. They make you write the number down, but it's a number that you're going to have to remember. Like I said, it's going to be your number while you're there. Now I was under the impression that reception was a quick process. Like it was like you come in, you stay a few days and you leave. No, 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 no. And we're going to get to that. Okay. Um, it wasn't quick at all. Uh, we spent, I believe a week there, seven to eight days there, depending on when you flew in. Um, yeah. It was a week there and another thing i want you to know is a lot of the people that you'll see here at reception especially if you're a woman will be the people who you're in the bay with so it would behoove you to you know i won't say make friends but uh, make yourself friendly and kind of like find people who you wouldn't mind you know you start building your support system while you're at reception um they do like so you'll be ultimately in uh, a battery with probably all of these people, you'll be in a platoon with some of these people, depending on your last name. So that's another thing. You can like be in reception, like, okay, your last name started I, my last name started I, we're probably gonna be in the same platoon. You know, let's be friendly towards each other. Just putting that in there. Okay, so once we got there, we got the number, we got our books, all that kind of good stuff. It gave a lot of instruction. The person that was there was a civilian um, at this point who gave us, was like giving us papers and stuff like that. So it was real chill. We then were assigned to a bay. The bay is where you sleep. Um, and like I said, it's the women's bay. We all were together. There was a whole lot more guys than there was females. So yeah, all the girls that were out there, all the ladies that were out there, we all end up being in the same bay. Um, they then took us into this little thing where we were issued our PT uniform, which you will grow to have a love-hate relationship with. <laughs> and they issued us like gloves and just all these things that you would grow to have a love-hate relationship because you have to carry these things, okay? So they gave us like laundry bags and just kind of really started to issue us our military attire. So the clothes that you're wearing, once you get past this point, so once you go into the bay, you will no longer see those clothes. You won't be wearing those clothes anymore. You're not gonna be really cute bopping around and what you can't, no, it's not happening. Um, you're gonna wear these PT clothes. Another thing I didn't know was our PT uniform, our summer PTs, is actually our night clothes, okay? So like I said, you're gonna wear this uniform a lot. This is the uniform that they issue you there. Um, I would make sure that it fits. Like, the people who were issuing our clothes, they were very, you know, I ain't gonna say they were nice, they were just, they're probably some of the nicest people you'll come across, but they weren't rushing you, especially the ladies, to figure out sizes. They understood that some ladies are, you know, bigger, smaller, whatever, up top or bottom, and we like different sizes, so they were very gracious with us with that. I would make sure that this uniform fits the way that you want it to fit. Um, 
I, my shirt fit perfectly, but my shorts were like, are like, um, I wanted them baggier. And if you leave there, like you can exchange them, but the process of being able to leave and come back is so tedious. Just make sure they fit once, once you're there. Um, and I can't speak of all reception battalions, but I can't speak of the one at Fort Seal. Just make sure once you leave there, like I said, they fit because you might not get an opportunity to come back as soon as you want to or just at all. Like I just kept the size that I had because it was a more of a hassle to try to exchange them than anything else. So I would say make sure they're like, you don't want to be baggy, but you also don't want them to be like tight. Okay. Now the good thing for me is I'm coming there in the winter time. Like I'm in basic training during winter time. So I'm not in my shorts a whole lot, especially when we go back, it's going to be like seven degrees this week. So I don't have to wear the summer PTs a whole lot. So just keep all of that in mind. You want to make sure that they fit overall. Okay. And especially the winter PTs as well, because the winter PTs go over the summer PTs. So you're not just wearing pants, you're wearing shorts, you're wearing those pants, you're wearing a short sleeve shirt and you're wearing a long sleeve shirt and then you're wearing the jacket. So make sure that this uniform fits. It's not the time to try to be cute. It's not a time to try to show off your figure. Just make sure the uniform fits. Okay. 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 So, after they gave us all that stuff then we got a chance to go into the bay so at this point it's like 2 a.m all the girls in there are sleeping because they've already went through this process um the earlier you get there the better but you really don't have any control over when you get there some of the girls got there you know a day before us and as we were there more girls came in so I, girls kept coming in up to like two days after i came so you don't have control over when you come in it just depends on your maps and the whole process with you and your recruiter but all all of that is basically getting everybody who's in the battery all together coming in at one time so like I said you don't have control over it but it is kind of annoying because we came in at 2 o'clock in the morning like I said everyone sleeps so we didn't get any instructions we didn't know if we were allowed to shower we didn't know what we were allowed to do so we ended up just literally like getting in the bed finding the first bed that we could find laying down going to sleep and I went to sleep maybe for like two hours two hours and, and a half and I someone's tapping my bed for me to get up and I'm like what is going on and the girl's like you have fire guard and I said fire guard what the heck is that you will grow to have a love-hate relationship with fire guard but fire guard doesn't end in reception I didn't know fire guard began in reception but it dang sure don't end in reception you have fire guard when you're in basic training as well so I have fire guard shortly after I got there. Um, you do fire guard in your PTs if you're lucky, but we'll get to that later. We'll get to how it is in basic training later. Um, yeah, so I have fire guard, which is basically you like keeping a watch over the bay while everyone else is sleeping. At no time is every single person sleeping in basic training. There's always at least two people up doing fire guard, okay? So yeah, we had to do fire guard and that was that. Um, so yeah, let's move on to the next I thing. do want to say though, so when you wake up, so after our fire guard shift, you wake up the next morning. Like I said, it is very important. Don't be one of those people. Now, you guys don't know me. I'm, you, you might not know that I'm, I'm like this, but I'm not really one of those people like in your face type of people. I love to talk to people. Um, people love to talk, um, talk to me, but I'm just not an in your face type of person. So I spent a lot of those first few days kind of like like this and I would highly suggest that you don't do that okay do not find a group of people who you click well with find a group of people who like I said begin to build your support system because even though you guys come from different backgrounds you guys are different you or guys are going to be in this all together and it would behoove you to have people who you can at least like talk to and cry to at the end of the day and that starts now that starts at reception okay so the next morning we were waking we were awakened um and it didn't seem like you got too much sleep but you'll learn to you'll learn to sleep when you can you'll learn as soon as they tell you you can go in the bay and do personal hygiene to do your personal hygiene and take your to the bay you will learn that very quickly okay so the next day we were issued a pay card it's called an easy pay card a civilian issued it to us and it's basically the card that you're going to use when you go to the px um, we also were issued a checklist now i left this checklist in my locker at basic training but it's basically like think of like a back to school checklist it's a checklist of all the things you're gonna do and this checklist is what reception is all about you will go through all this process of like let's see i have it here um wait hold on wait 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 wait, wait. so you have the checklist like i said 
you're going to go through this checklist when you complete this checklist it's going to be after you complete it it's literally going to be time for you to go because it's going to take a few days because you have to think of it the amount of people that they have to do you're going to wait in so many lines you're going to wait in so many lines you're going to despise lines okay the reason why reception takes a week is because you have to wait in lines you have to wait in lines you have to wait in lines tell me what do you mean have you ever been to the driver's license office? Have you ever been to the social security office to get like a new social security card? That's the kind of lines and waiting you're gonna be doing. Imagine being in the social security line for a week. That's what reception is like, okay? It is very agonizing, it's very annoying, it's very boring. And mixed in there being yelled at by drill sergeants. I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm just saying. Um, it's not fun, it's not fun, it's boring. I would suggest that you bring like a book to read. Um, I would suggest that you, I have some other suggestions at the end here, but just bring something that's gonna keep you like mentally occupied. Um, learn how to keep yourself mentally occupied because it is boring. It, reception is boring, especially once you are moving along in the process and you're waiting for other people to do things, it's boring, okay? Don't forget, you actually um, remember I told you like being kind of like finding that group of people you get along with it would behoove you to have someone like within your number range someone who sits by you within that number that I told you guys about if it's not it's okay but you have to move around in battle buddies you can go nowhere by yourself in basic training you can't address a drill sergeant by, by yourself you can't go to the bathroom by yourself you can't even think by yourself everything that you do from the point when you're at reception is with the battle buddy so like I said it would behoove you you can't be one of those people like I'm gonna do it by myself it's not gonna work so just say that so we start our checklist blood work let's talk about blood work let's talk about blood work let's talk about blood work it's one of the first thing that you're gonna do because at some point in time you have to get shots now I want to say this there was a girl who was at my reception who was held there for eight weeks when we were there so ultimately I believe she spent 10 weeks at reception because of her blood work what the heck what the heck it wasn't in her plan. There's nothing that she could do about it. However, that's what happened. They held her at reception for her blood. If she had low iron. So what would I tell you with this? I would get blood work done with my doctor before I go. Okay, and know what you need to work on. Don't go up in there sick, cause you'll be held there. You'll say, you know what? I won't go home. Don't even worry about it, and you won't go home. You'll be there. And when I tell you you won't go home, you won't go home. You are not going home. Once you get Look, once they flew you out from MIPS, forget about it. You're gonna stay there until the process is done, okay? I just wanna say that. No one, ma no one made that known. I just wanna say that. She was there for 10 weeks in reception, not even in base training, in reception. So make sure everything's on the up and up with your blood work. I'm not saying that to scare you. I'm saying that to make you aware because after you did move from reception, you still have to do the same amount of training and basic training as everyone else. So even though she spent 10 weeks in reception, she still had to do her 10 weeks of basic training for some blood work. And there were other people who got held up there for other reasons. Just, just, just. <laughs> That's all I have to say is just. Okay, so the next thing was shots. There was also a girl, my she's one of my lovely battle buddies, who had never had a shot a day in her life. Never had a vaccination a day in her life. And baby, they made her get all of them, okay? They don't care. They don't care. And you're gonna say, well, I'm gonna do a little shot record. I'm gonna fix something up. They're gonna, no. They're testing your blood to see what vaccinations you have. So they ask you no questions. They didn't ask you for no records. They don't care about none of that. Let's see what that blood do. Okay, what is the blood saying that you already have in your system? That's what they're going by. There were people who had seven, eight vaccinations. I mean, you name it. I got five. And all of my vaccinations were up to date. Five was probably the least amount that i seen anyone get it was me and some other people but it was the least amount that you get they also made me take a covid vaccination it's not optional it's not oh i'll decline no you're gonna take it they're gonna make you take it okay so there's that if you're one of those people who like and i am one of those people i really don't believe in like flu vaccinations and all that kind of stuff like that i you know the normal vaccination is cool but that, that stuff they want you to be taking every year i'm really not one of those people who are for that they don't care if you for it or not you'll be taking it okay on that day you'll be taking it you and your tears and all because i was definitely crying you and your tears will be taking that shot 
Um, another thing they do is a dental exam. They just kind of took x-rays and stuff like that. Um, I imagine if something was wrong, like something bad, bad, bad. Once you get to basic training, there's like, you know, dentist. You can get a dentist office and all that kind of stuff. They're not gonna leave you hanging. If you have something wrong, like with your eyes or anything like that, once you get to basic training, you are able to seek like medical help. However, I would not suggest that you do that. I would not suggest that you because let's say it's something really bad and it stops your training because you have to be like on bed rest or something like that. We'll get to that later, but you don't want that to, you know, stop your training because it will stop your training if you like put on quarters or something like that. And if something stops your training, you could be recycled. You don't want to be recycled. That's what I was talking about. That girl held up at reception. That's called recycle. You're just being held there. You don't want to be a part of that. So just make sure that you have all of those things up to date. However, if you don't, if they're not like, you know, if you know your teeth jacked up, if you know you need a root canal, you couldn't pay for it. I understand, but just know that it's something that could possibly cause you to be recycled because it might cause you trouble in basic training and you might have to get it looked at but just overall they just took like pictures and stuff like that they did an eye exam you will be issued military glasses probably the first week that you get to basic training um so if you need glasses you know you need glasses but you can afford glasses they're gonna get you taken care of um our id cards so we took our id cards for our like for our cat cards and then if you have family and stuff like that you'll do the whole deers process all that stuff is on this checklist like they they got it all covered you're gonna cover it all before you even go to basic training um we went to the financial you do stuff like sort out your gi bill and all that kind of stuff and you make sure your life insurance and just all the things anything you can think of that's financial that you need taken care of they're gonna take care of it for you okay we also took our military photo for graduation and our like little hat a little fancy hat and things like that um also in this checklist you will go through a process where you issued your boots where you issued your ocps and i want to say this again the same thing i said with the pt uniform you're not trying to be cute okay i get you want the uniform to fit nice absolutely but you're not trying to be cute i want you to think of the fact that you are going to be running that you're going to be rucking that you're going to be doing a whole lot in this uniform you want this uniform to be comfortable the guy gave me a uniform initially that was my size it fit perfectly okay but if it perfectly like I'm going somewhere like I'm trying to be cute I wanted the uniform to be loose and you want the uniform to be loose because at some point like I said I'm in basic training during the winter time you're gonna have to put on gear underneath it like gear to stay warm you want this stuff to fit okay you want all of this stuff to fit under there okay you could have, I mean the little fleece jacket you could even have to put that underneath your OCP top so you want this stuff to fit you're not trying to be cute okay I'm just saying that like I said they're very gracious especially to the females with the fitting of the uniforms but a lot of times people be trying to be cute it's really not time to be cute for your boots and for your shoes make sure make sure you stay there you do not get your butt down okay until those boots fit <laughs> And tell them boots fit because you're gonna be rocking in the boots. You're gonna be running in the boots. Those boots are gonna be your friends, and if they don't fit, they're not gonna be your friends. They're gonna be your enemies. You're gonna hate feet, and you're gonna hate those boots by the end of basic training if you don't make sure that those boots fit. But all of that stuff happens in reception. So you get all of those uniforms. You get all of that stuff in reception okay so i want to move on i hope i covered everything um if you have any questions about anything that i've covered thus far leave them down below i'm gonna get to you okay if i don't get to you before i leave i'm definitely gonna get to you once i come back once i get all settled in okay so i want to talk about some things i learned and then some things that i would suggest that you bring okay so let's get started with this so First things first, one thing that I would suggest that you learn while you're in reception is how to make up your bed. Now, some people are gonna take reception because it's very, you think you're not gonna realize, like you've never been to anything like basic training before. I've never been to anything like basic training before. You're gonna think that reception is like, like basic training, but it's really not. And it's kind of relaxed depending on, you know, the people in the bay, of course. Um, you need to learn how to make up your bed because you're going to need to make up your bed very quickly and very efficiently once you get to basic training. Um, like once you get to actual basic training, so you want to learn that there. Ask as many questions as you can about making up your bed. I ended up bringing a clipboard because someone said it would like help making up the bed. I didn't end up using it. Just learn how to make up your bed, okay? If you can practice at home how to make up your bed, practice at home. 
just learn how to make a bed, okay? Another thing I would say to learn is how to take quick and efficient showers. Now, some basic trainings do shower drills. My basic training did not do shower drills. Like, they have not done shower drills. Can't say do not because I'm still there. They have not done shower drills. The first few days that we get there, we got there, we did have to take really quick showers. So just learn how to be efficient with your shower. Um, I told you guys a little scrub thing that I have, like bring something, bring a towel and then bring something that exfoliates the skin because you are gonna be like outside and things like that. You wanna take care of your skin. I told you guys about my hands, like, honey, my hands are beat. My hands are like, girl, screw you, okay? Just make sure, make sure you're taking care of yourself while you're there. I know everything's really quick. Just break up your day. Like be like, okay, today I'm really gonna pay attention to moisturizing my skin. This day I'm gonna pay attention to moisturizing my hair. I know that you're in basic training and it's not really about luxury, but you do wanna take care of your body, okay? Um, the next thing is learn the positions of attention and learn the ranking structures. So, like I said, don't be clowning around. Like, learn what these things mean. When they say, you know, parade rest and at ease and position of attention, like, you need to make sure that you know all these things because it's going to help you when you go to base training so that you don't get yourself in trouble and just not really stupid. Okay? And then also learn, like I said, ranking structures. When certain, you know, certain... NCOs and just certain people come into the room you need to be able to recognize them and they give you a book with all this stuff in there but you also when you see it in the book and then when you see it in real life like on their patch just make sure like you're asking questions amongst your valley battle buddies and you just are figuring out what those ranks look like because the last thing you want to do when you get to basic training is not call it like it is because you don't know okay because they really don't care if you don't know they just want you to know so I will learn that definitely while you're in reception the next thing I would learn is get used to standing. Um, I didn't know that I wasn't used to standing until I had to stand for hours, okay? Um, until you had to stand for hours at parade rest um, or at, I mean, you, you don't know. Until you've had to stand with your arms behind your back for an extended period of time, you don't know how painful it is. Get used to standing up, okay? And then, like, you get, get used to standing up, get used to sitting down on the ground get used to sitting up sitting down standing up anywhere for hours i would say that and i'm not even being funny i'm just being for real um when you wait in the lines at reception you're gonna be standing up when you're waiting in formation you're gonna stand up you're gonna be waiting in lines for the next 11 weeks so get used to standing up they're not gonna say oh would you like a seat oh one second let me get you a seat no get used to standing get used to sitting like when you see a chair when you get to sit in a chair you are going to be so grateful but there are going to be people around you talking and soon that chair will be taken away you'll be sitting on the floor or you'll be standing up so get used to both of those okay um study your materials so the material they give you while everybody else is yak yak yakking around you study those materials because those things are going to be things that you need to know once you get to basic training and the more that you know, the less likely you are to get yourself in trouble, okay? And another thing, I would begin writing letters. Um, I would write, I would begin writing letters about this process until you, like, and then hold the letter until you get to basic training. So that your family knows about your first days and just kind of what's going on. Because once we got to basic training, we actually got to use our phone for five more minutes but five minutes i was crying okay five minutes minutes isn't nearly enough time to let them know what's actually going on so i would just put it all in letters while you have a little bit more relaxed time at um at reception because that first week of basic training you're not gonna have time to write letters you're gonna be dog tired it's a whole new world you got your body's getting used to all the things that you have to do and yeah, you still want your family to know what's up. Just, you know, it lessens the stress on you and them so that when you do get to talk to them on Sunday, it's not so rushed and just all over the place. So I would definitely begin writing letters, okay? So let's move on into some of the things I would make certain that I pack, um, at least up until this point. These are things I would not leave home without, okay? Okay, so while I'm taking a water break, before I get into like the packing things, excuse me i'm sorry um before i get into the packing things i do want to say this you know i say this all the time this ain't nothing new take care of your body okay take care of your body and especially before you go off to do something like this like i've said before 
make sure that you're paying extra attention to your body, that you put extra love and care into your body. By drinking water is one of the more important things. You're going to be forced to drink water while you're there, maybe forced to drink milk, maybe forced to drink juice. I don't drink juice. I can't tell you the last time I drank juice until I went to basic training. So your body's gonna be going through a lot of things. I mean, getting blood work done, getting these new vaccinations, being around a bunch of people, and you just want, you want your immune system to be able to take care of you as best as possible, you know what I mean? And the only way that that can happen is, is, is if you're taking care of your body. Okay, so like I said, with that being said, make sure that you're drinking a lot of water before you go off to basic training. Make sure that you continue to drink water while you're at basic training and just continue to take care of yourself because it's hard out here. Okay, it's hard out here. And you don't want to get caught up in nothing. Okay, okay. And I don't think like this is going to be a little TMI, but this is something I did not even consider, but I want you to consider it that you're going to be showering pooping and peeing around 50 60 girls okay I mean if you one of those people like me who I don't really even fart in front of people it might be a bit of an adjustment okay um, I'm adjusted now because you don't have no choice but I will tell you the first three days that I was at reception maybe even four days I was constipated I wasn't constipated because nothing was moving I was constipated because I was kind of like poo shy you know how you like pee shy well I was poo shy and you don't want to be that girl so like take care of your body and then also just be prepared like you know drinking a lot of water helps especially if you're like backed up and stuff like that when they feed you food they feed us really good there okay you'll be eating good the whole time be very conscious of the food that you're putting into your body and find out what foods like help you go to the bathroom and things like that and if you're having trouble go to the bathroom while you're reception while you're basic training in general eat more of those foods don't be blocked up okay don't be blocked up don't not drink your water because you don't know when you're gonna use the bathroom just don't be blocked up okay all right and i'm gonna do a whole separate video on like period stuff on your period and basic training and things like that but i will say just a little snippet a little tidbit okay um bring bring the supplies that you need and find out a way to be efficient especially when you're on your period because you're not going to get any special like you know, let's say you're one of those people who have like cramps and oh, I need to be in the bed. I need, you know, my doll, give me my my doll every four hours and I need my heating pad. It's not happening. So don't even think about it. Okay, so on to our packing list. Like I said, I'm gonna do a whole separate video for you guys about that. On to our packing list. What should you pack? What do you need to make sure you pack? Okay, when you go off to basic training and especially, like I said, when you're in reception, what are the most important things that I've packed thus far? All right, so you're probably gonna hear me say this multiple times, but you guys saw the video of all the stuff that I packed. I would have packed more. Okay, we get to go in our bags probably like every Sunday to get more things out of our personal bags. Pack what you need. Do realize though when packing what you need, you're gonna have to carry all this stuff. However, you don't want to be like you don't know when you're gonna go to the PX. The PX doesn't have everything that you need. You don't know what your drill sergeant is gonna let you have. So just pack. I'm not saying pack anything that's like contraband, anything that can get your tail in trouble. That's not what I'm saying. But the things that you can bring, I would pack them. Even though you have to carry them, it's worth carrying them and then like going in your stuff and being able to get the things that you need. I was fully prepared, okay? So much so that people were asking me for items because I packed all that stuff I showed you guys. I packed all of that stuff and used most of it. No, used all of it used everything okay so things like flash cards and just all these little things that no one thinks about make sure that you pack appropriate amount of stuff don't roll up there with nothing a lot of especially females a lot of people are like oh my recruiter said just come with extra clothes i didn't bring any extra clothes i mean i think i bought an extra pair of pants and i didn't even end up wearing them they change you out of your civilian clothes so fast you don't even have time for all that make sure that you bring that other stuff like soaps and things of that nature okay so the first thing i put was um headphones a lot of people didn't think about this but you're going to be around let's say there's 100 people talking on their cell phone at one time you if you don't have headphones you want to have a hard time like you want to be able to enjoy your 30 minutes an hour five minutes 15 minutes however long they give you to talk on your phone 
you're going to want to enjoy that time. You're going to want to be able to hear and you're going to want your hands free so that you can check emails or anything. However you roll, you're going to want your hands free. And most, most importantly, you're going to want to be able to hear. Make sure that you bring headphones, not AirPods, not your special Bluetooth, you know, not your fancy stuff. You want headphones that need do, do not need to be charged because you really, the times that you get to charge your phone, like you don't want to be in a group of people who always need to charge something because it's just going to lessen the amount of time that you get to use the phone. So definitely make sure you have a phone that charges. Um, I bought my portable battery with me. I would make sure that you have one of those because charging your phone, they charge our phones for us, but it's not really of a top priority for you to charge your phone and stuff like that. So just make sure you have something to charge your phone. And then I would most definitely make sure that I have headphones that don't need to be charged that you can just like plug into your phone. Okay. The next thing is the bath sponge. I mentioned this earlier, learning how to take quick efficient showers i would bring a bath sponge we have towels um but the towels are kind of like hanging and the towels they gave us really suck they were like a uh, microfiber they felt really weird on your fingertips i didn't feel like they were really cleaning my body if i'm honest with you i bought a scrub and everybody was asking me where i got my scrubber from that little like um we got a little african body thing that you could like wash off your back and stuff like that i would highly suggest bringing that one specifically because you can like like i said you can exfoliate your back you know me spending time in the mud in the field and and all this kind of stuff you want to be clean okay and i would highly suggest bring a bath sponge the next thing is um small containers for like shampoo and soap so i have my big soap thing you know like a big soap thing and then i put them you guys know those little there i don't have one over here just a little travel size like um i think there's one is there one over there you know what i'm talking about i put it on the screen um the little travel size little things that you can put your soap and stuff in so when you're going in the, the shower, shower and things you're being more efficient and you're not having to carry all these things with you just it's a lot of people it's a lot of people waiting to get in the showers and you want to be able to carry all your stuff in your hand and kind of go boop boop like you won't be leaving your stuff all over the place you want to be efficient and carry around those big old containers and stuff is not really efficient like i said i put all of my stuff in containers Excuse me. I put all of my stuff in containers. One, because I didn't check a bag. And that's another thing. You need to make sure they're like within travel. All the little liquids and stuff you bring, they're in travel size. The guy who came with me, they took all his stuff at um, check-in, like at TSA, and chunked it to the trash. Okay? So you need to make sure that everything is in travel size containers. And those travel size containers will really help you once you get to, you know, once you get to doing what you're supposed to do. Um, like once you get to basic training, even reception, they really helped in reception because you have to wait till you get to the PX. So some people didn't get to the PX until like day five. So if you didn't bring any soaps or things like that, you're really gonna have to be begging people for stuff. And you don't really, that's not what you, you don't wanna be doing all that, okay? Yeah, you wanna make friends and stuff like that, but you don't wanna be begging nobody for nothing. Because the people, none of us know when we're gonna go to the PX. None of us know when we're gonna get more supplies. So. People are like asking for washing powders and things like that. Like they give you a chance to wash your clothes and all this kind of stuff. You just bring, bring some stuff. That's what I'm going to say. And that's another thing I would bring. Like, um, they had, we had like Tide pods. I don't know if your drill sergeant is going to let you, but I would definitely bring like a little Ziploc bag full just in case. Um, the next thing is good shoes. This is another thing. I don't know if your drill sergeants, it just, it really depends on your drill sergeants. Um, our drill sergeants let us use our like new shoes right off the top. Um, you're going to be walking a whole lot. They do issue you shoes. So if you don't have good tennis shoes or, you know, cause you couldn't afford it or you just don't have any, they do issue you shoes, but they're not comfortable. Okay. So I will make sure that I get some good insoles good insoles honey some insoles for them boots and some insoles for them running shoes because you're gonna do a lot of standing and your feet are going to say screw you i said that already did i already say that oh yeah okay make sure you have good running shoes make sure you have good running shoes make sure you have a good insole okay please please even i would even go off to say make sure that you're like walking around outside with no shoes or getting your feet just real rough and real calloused because your feet are going to thank you for it. I know it's not cute, but you don't need your feet to be cute for this adventure that you're going on. You need your feet to be sturdy, okay? Make sure you get good running shoes. Um, another thing that no one thought of, except me, because I knew how hard of a time I had in high school with that lock, 
make sure that you get an easy lock i showed you guys the lock that i have i have the one that has like numbers as a matter of fact i need to order another one because i need to bring another one with me um make sure that you get an easy lock because once you get to basic training and they say you got 30 seconds to come up out of here you want to make sure you got a lock that you can open and close in 30 seconds and that little whole spin around thing i don't know about you but i know a lot about me it's a no and then the whole key thing there's a bunch of people who lost their key had to get their locks like cut open because they lost their key i don't think the key is a good idea just because you have to change uniform so much there's so many things you have to keep up with between time and just different things keeping up with a key is really not I wouldn't suggest it I would suggest getting a lock like the one I had uh, one that's easy one that's with numbers there's even one with letters and putting that on your lock you can also there's one that has like a like a, I put it on the screen you can like put it up down and all this kind of stuff get yourself an easy lock okay just not the one with the key um, the next thing and the last thing I have on my list is get a watch and learn how to use it Yes, they're going to take you to the PX. They're going to allow you to get watches. However, the watches that they let them have, they didn't come with instructions, so they didn't know how to use it. I bought my watch and I learned how to use my watch before I left. So you can set your own timers. So you can set your, I mean, you, you can set your own alarms and get used to, you know, reading military time, all this kind of stuff, because you're going to need a watch. If you don't need anything else, you're going to need a watch. You're going to have to be at the right place at the right time. And yeah, there might be people around you who are late, but you don't want to be one of those people who are late, okay? Bring yourself a watch. Okay, so I didn't work on any of my project. I was talking the whole time. Um, as always, if you have a question, ask a question. I know this was a very like poof, video, like very compact video with a lot of information, and there's so much more that I can say about it. However, I just want to kind of give you like those major little details because I had no clue what to expect from reception. Just know that it's really, it's reception. It's like, like I said, the best way that I can describe it as is sitting at the social security office for a week, a week and talking and having to sleep there and wake up and then finish the process. That's the best way I can describe it. It's a lot of waiting. It's not fun. It's not like, it's very boring. You'll be so ready to go to basic training once you leave reception. Um, the one thing that I can say is make sure that you like just getting yourself acclimated um, to being around this like this amount of people and then sleep when you can sleep when you can I am here I'm home on holiday block leave like I said and the first so I've been here six or seven days at this six six days at this point the first five days I did nothing but sleep and that was not in my plans but my body needed to sleep because we really don't get like quality sleep between waking up for fire guard and all this kind of stuff the sleep is like but you need sleep all the stuff that you're going to be doing your body needs time to recover to heal and you can that can only happen during the time of rest and when you're sleeping so as you can sleep in basic training and reception sleep 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 don't get in trouble don't be sleeping when you're not supposed to be sleeping but when they give you the opportunity to sleep sleep all right okay so i will see you guys in the next video as always if you have a question ask a question